Hi Zen, hi Rhiannon, hi Meeples. It's been a while since my last video and that's because I've been away and busy doing other things family orientated and I thought it was time to answer Rhiannon's question from earlier this month or sort of not answer it at all actually. Um, so Rhiannon was asking about uh, what games I'd like to take, take along to parties. Instead I thought I'd take the opportunity to talk about uh, some games that I picked up from Essen. So, as Rhiannon was saying in her video, uh, she was telling us about the Quiver case for card games, so I thought what I'd do is look at three games that I found at uh, Essen Spiel and uh, would fit perfectly in her um, Quiver case. The first game is uh, called Game of Trains, and it is by Brain Games. Uh, it's a game for two to four players, where each player uh, is given uh, seven cards and a locomotive. So the locomotive looks like this and they're dealt out seven carriage cards. And what's kind of cool about the carriage cards is that the majority of them have got a little homage to something uh, cultish. So there's the A-Team van, there's the General Lee from Dukes of Hazard, there's the Loch Ness Monster and there's the Game of Thrones chair and so on and so forth. Um, now what you'll notice about these cards is that each card has a unique number on it and the numbers run from 1 to something around the region of 84, something like that. So what happens at the start of the game is every person is dealt um, seven cards which they place in numerical order from the highest number card they've got to the lowest number card that they've got. And the, game, the, uh, the idea of the game and the winner of the game is the first person who's able to uh, change the order entirely of their cards. So instead of going from highest to lowest, it runs from lowest to highest. So how do you do that? On your turn you have two possibilities you can do. The first thing you can do is you can take a card from the top of the draw deck and replace one of the cards in your pile. Uh, so you, for example you take a top card, turn it over and it's a 15 and you can replace any card uh, in, your, in your locomotive um, and that'll theoretically get rid of one of the cards from your train and hopefully set you up in order uh, accordingly. But one of the other things you can do, or the other action you can do, is you'll notice at the top of these cards there are various icons. Um, I've managed to choose some repeating icons, but uh, so there's a couple more. And so what you can do there is you can choose when you uh, get rid of a card from your locomotive, you place it into a central pool and if at any time there are two matching icons in the central pool, they get discarded entirely from the game. But as long as there is a single icon in the pool, you can choose to activate the icon on that card and doing so will let you create a power. So, for example, this one allows you to move the card uh, two places to the right. This one allows you to swap the card immediately next to it uh, this card will lock a card, um, and you can only lock the first, the middle, or the last locomotive. The reason why you might do that is because there are three cards, one like this, uh, one like this, and one with the X in the middle, where everybody at the table has to discard immediately uh, the card that's on the position indicated, so left, right, or middle, and then draw a card up and replace it. And that is obviously going to start messing with other people and how quickly they can solve it. Um, but it's a really quick game, really fun. The winner is the first person to uh, put their cards in uh, n numerical uh, order from lowest to highest. So the second game I want to talk to you about is this. It is called Dreisind ein Zuvil. And I apologise for butchering that entirely. And what it means is uh, three are one too many, literally translated. So in three is one too many, what you've got is a series of cards numbered from uh, zero, the lowest card here, all the way up to, I think it's 89, and uh, the cards are grouped into uh, 12 groupings of seven different colours, and then there are three cards, which are the 15, 45, and the 75, which are grey, and then the 0, 30, and 60, which have arrows on them. So you lay out the 0, 30, and 60, and you deal everybody 20 cards. That's the setup of the game. Uh, then everybody is going to draw a hand of 8 cards from their deck of 20 and on your turn you simply place a card to the position on the board which will be to the uh, to the right 
of the 0 to the right of the 30 or to the right of the 60. So here it runs from 1 to uh, 29, here it runs from 31 to uh, uh, 59, and here it runs from 60 all the way up to 89. Now, the idea of the game here is that at the end of the game you're going to get points for what you've collected. If you have one card of a colour, it's going to be worth one point. If you have two cards of a colour, it's going to be worth five points. However, if you have three cards of one colour, it's going to be worth negative points. So, you're trying to also collect one of each card, in which case you'll get to draw one of these um, cards here in the game, which will give you a bonus. So the first person to do it will get ten, next person to do it will get seven, next person five, and the last person three. Um, those are all bonus points that you'll get for collecting seven uh, matching colours. So, how do you get matching colours? Well, what you do on your turn, as I say, is you lay a card into one of the positions next to the, 30, uh, next to the 0, 30 or 60. However, if you lay the fifth card there, then depending on where the card is placed, you place them in numerical order, will mean that you get to draw cards. So, if you place it as the highest card from for example on the 0 to uh, 29 row, if you place uh, the 28 and it's the highest card, then you get to take the card which is uh, directly to the right of the number, so 0 or the 30 or the 60. And you take that and you place it in front of you. If it's a number that's not the highest number in that row, you place it, you insert that into the row and then you take any cards that are to the right of that. So for example, if I place the 17 down and there's already a, uh, a 26 card and a 24 card, then I get both of those cards, regardless of colour, and I put them in my tableau in front of me. And they're going to be worth uh, the points accordingly. If they're the first card I've got, they're going to be worth one point each. If they are the um, second card, they're going to be worth five points at the end of the game. But if they're the third, I have to turn them over. At the end of the game, as I say, every card that you have turned over is going to be worth negative points. But it's a fun little game, and I imagine that that will be quite popular with uh, certain people. The third game I want to talk about is called Celestia, and as you can see, that's quite a big box. However, you can break it down to its core components, uh, which are mainly cards, and uh, it will still fit into the quiver case. What I really like about this game is that it's a pushy luck game, and what you've got is this little airship, which is made out of um, punch board, and you've got your little meeples in here that are riding along in the airship and it's really rather cool. Now these meeples are not the one that comes with the game, these are expansion meeples or ones that you can buy from a third party, however um, the regular meeples are just um, pawns. So what you do is you place your people or your meeples into the airship and you all start at position one and there are a series of tiles which are locations you move to and they go up uh, one, two, four, six, and so on and so forth. Now what the one, two, four, and six show is the minimum number of points that you can get in a draw deck which will be placed next to it. Uh, for example, these cards are placed next to the one. These ones are placed much higher up, I think, next to the 12. So on your turn, you are going to be the captain. You're going to roll two dice. And on these two dice, uh, there are a series of icons. There are clouds, birds, lightning, and pirates. And you're going to have a hand of cards and your hand of cards have various symbols on them, like pirates, birds, lightning, clouds, and there are a couple of special cards in there which I'll explain briefly later. So what you do on your turn is you roll the dice and then everybody goes round the table um, looking at the dice and saying, for example, if you roll two clouds, and they'll go around the table saying whether or not they stay on the airship or if they're going to jump out. Once everybody's been round, you as the captain then have to, if you have the cards in your hand, play them to the discard pile, and then you move the ship on. Anybody who jumped off ship gets to draw the card where they jumped off from, and they will be worth points at the end. So, for example, this card here will be worth four points. Uh, this card here will be worth two points. And so on and so forth. And in this game, it's the first person to 50 points that wins the game. The trick is, as I say, it's pushy luck, so um, you're choosing to stay on or not but the person who is captain is going to change every time the airship moves. So once the first, cap, uh, the first person played, they rolled their dice, they paid the cost, the airship's moved on. Everybody who's still on the airship then stays in the game, and the next person who's on the airship rolls the dice, and they roll a bird and a blank. Have they got the cards in their hand? Yes or no? Um, if they have, then you choose to stay on. If they don't, you can jump off. But uh, once everybody's revealed what they think they want to do, then uh, the cards are played or not. If the captain can't play the cards, 
then the airship crashes and everything resets in the game. It goes back to the beginning and that is when everybody gets to draw new cards up. So the longer, the further you push your luck, you're going to be having fewer and fewer cards in your hand. Additionally, the further you get along, you're going to be rolling more dice. So for example, this one you roll at 15, you roll three dice. At the 20, you'd be rolling four dice. It's, as I say, push your luck game where you're trying to get as most points as possible by outguessing the person who's currently captain. Um, it's a really gorgeous looking game. There are some special cards that you can have in your hand. There are ones which allow you to parachute off um, the boat or push somebody else off the boat or uh, there's a wild card. There's one which allows you to um, uh, uh, force the captain to re-roll if he's rolled blanks and there's one which allows the captain to re-roll if he wants to and so on and so forth. So it's a fun little push luck game which would fit easily into your quiver case. So those are three games that uh, I think, as I say, will fit into the quiver case that I picked up at Essen that I think you'd really like. That's my video for this week. Thanks for listening. Bye.